Hey, Soulmates, it is Friday. Welcome to it. I missed the St. Patrick's Day memo, but there's a little green up in here somewhere. You know, I'm making up for it. I got some green here. I got some green oh. pants on. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I, I'm wearing yeah. my green glasses. Okay. So I got us covered. You, okay, you made up for it. <laughs> All right, welcome to Fox Soul's uh, Black Report. We're following the travel advisory from the White House and the Black Olympic medalist suspended for over a year. Welcome again, I'm Courtney Hicks. And I'm Nicordelai Corte. Plus Plus the historic first for Fisk University and the reason why one New York City couple is suing a restaurant. They're the stories that impact our people. Our news, our views and our voice. So let's get into our big conversation for the day. Texas officials have announced a state takeover of Houston's public school district, one of the largest in the U.S. with nearly 200,000 students. Now the decision has angered Democrats who accuse Republicans of seeking increased authority. The takeover replaces the current board of trustees with a new superintendent and appointed board of managers. Education Commissioner Mike Morath accused the board of failing to improve student outcomes and violating open meetings and procurement laws. Critics argue state takeovers generally uh, have not led to bigger or better improvements. You know, and we've seen this happen in a number of other states where uh, the state has taken over local school districts, and I agree, you hardly ever see uh, the outcomes mm -hmm. uh, work out well for all students, but particularly black and brown students. Uh, and, you know, this may supercharge some of the efforts that are afoot in uh, Texas uh, to, you know, ban books in the classroom mm -hmm. and, you know, you're looking at censoring AP black history, for example. I mean, there's a there's a lot of damage mm -hmm. that state officials can do by taking over uh, one of the biggest school districts in the country. Yeah, here in Michigan, uh, Detroit in particular, the, the school district here, there was a takeover um, and you, you have this new um, body in place and what a lot of parents don't understand is that the money generated via taxes is going to pay off that old school board's debt and so these these new schools that are trying to build and rebuild and maintain um, don't get that money to help with uh, students and, and what students need so it's really a, just a sick vicious cycle and, and at the end of it it's our, our young people who suffer the most. That's right that's right and our parents are very far removed from decision makers that they're going all all the way to uh, uh, the Texas State Capitol. Well, Georgia quietly passed a bill changing the Sapelo Island Heritage Authority Board without input from the island's Geechee residents, mm -hmm. descendants of enslaved Africans. Critics are concerned that this could lead to more gentrification and displacement. Presently, two Geechee descendants sit on the board, but non-descendants could outnumber them if the last seat goes to a non-descendant. The bill now goes to the Senate Committee for Natural Resources and the Environment for a vote. Let me tell you, that that um, culture is so critical. It and, and if you ever get a chance to get down to that area in South Carolina, go visit. There, There's tours and they're very welcoming and to just tap into the history and the customs and the traditions that are still very much alive in that community. I remember I tapped in, you know, moving south, working there for a while. And even before that, there was a, a show that my little, little brother used to watch called Gullah Gullah Island. Mm -hmm. And I remember it and I, and for for a minute, I didn't know the people were actually real. And it caused for me to tap into that entire storyline and it's just absolutely fascinating. So, you know, fight on to preserve, you know, your culture and fight for that seat because it is so important. And yet again, a part of our very uh, diverse history as uh, African Americans uh, brought over to this country. That's right. Years and years ago. That's right, that's right. I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine uh, who is of Geechee heritage. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was schooling me on how yep. this was 13 generations in the making. 13 generations of Geechee people have been on this land and the fact that there are developers that are salivating at the mouth to get, to get their hands on this land. Well, it's off that water. You know, anytime something's yeah. off some water, you know they're going to want it back. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, this is this is a, a major issue and, you know, there are pros and cons in terms of whether or not the federal government might get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, right now you have an administration that might be sympathetic to the Geechee people, mm -hmm. you know, but who's to say the next Republican administration may not be so sympathetic. Yeah, beautiful culture though. All right, let's go to Dayton, Ohio, where a man 
who pretended to be a Ghanaian prince has been sentenced to 20 years in federal prison. Daryl Robert Harrison, that name don't even match, <laughs> scammed at least 14 people out of more than $800,000 by posing as an African prince and convincing them to invest in African trucking and mining companies. He also falsely claimed to be a minister of the Powerhouse of Prayer Ministries, which many of the victims, the fraud victims belong to. Harrison was found guilty of 10 counts of federal crimes, including mail and wire fraud, along with conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud. Well, I certainly didn't see that scene in Coming to America. <laughs> I, I didn't see that at all. I mean, yeah. you know, he was probably watching something on the TV and decided, you know what, I'm gonna do that. I think I, I think, people might believe me as the uh, the main character of that storyline and clearly uh, that story went left real fast. Well first and foremost you have a name that kind of reflects poss the possibility of being a prince. I'm wondering, I was trying to search, did he actually change his name or, or did he stay, you know, Harrison? And then two, you know, I don't want to belittle the congregants but with all the information out there and just a quick Google search it's like, come on, folks, like, let's 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 wise up here because these folks are out here obviously scamming and taking advantage of, of folks and shame on him. And I think he deserves everything he gets as far as time served or being right. served. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Well, Florida lawmakers are debating a bill that would ban any college level program promoting diversity, equity and inclusion, along with critical race theory rhetoric. The legislation has raised concerns from black fraternities and sororities such as Delta Sigma Theta, Alpha Kappa Alpha, Omega Psi Phi, whose chapters may disappear due to the new bill. State Senator Chevron Jones called the bill vague and criticized it for its potential impact on faculty who may be afraid to advise these groups if funding is cut. Representative Alex Andrade, who introduced the bill, said student groups could continue to operate as normal. Here to discuss more about what's going on in Florida, how it's impacting our community, and how CRT is harming students is political correspondent Keisha King. Welcome to Fox Souls Black Report, Keisha. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here. And so let's jump right into it. HB 999 would reportedly ban any program promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion at the college level throughout the state What's up with this war on black opportunity? Do you support this bill? I do, because it's not a war on black opportunity. Black Americans have shown ourselves to be resilient and overcomers all throughout American history. And what this bill is saying is that we actually support not discriminating because there is not truly diverse. It's not truly equity in what in this new sense that we're defining equity and it's certainly not inclusive. Many of these DEI programs seek to exclude people from certain spaces and colleges. They seek to not in, be diverse, not diverse in thought, not, di not diverse in, in even in skin color. I mean, we've seen uh, college kids say, you know, if you're white, you can't come into this space. Or we've seen uh, college kids say, we want separate uh, graduations. We want, um, here in Duval County, this was high school, but we had a DEI consultant where I live that said that they were, they were planning a segregated school assembly. This is not, uh, th that's not opportunity. That is ripping children apart. Our children don't have the same beefs, you know, like from the 1930s. I don't even understand why we're trying to put that on kids. Many of our children have, their groups of friends are from many different backgrounds. And so this is not true diversity. It's certainly not true uh, inclusion or equity. And so it's, it's curi I'm curious as to how you would define true diversity, equity, inclusion. I know, you know, in college, I spoke at our black graduation and, you know, a lot of folks that are watching have attended black graduations and see it as, as, as a way to affirm uh, black students on campus and create a, a sense of belonging. But you don't see it that way. You see it as uh, segregation, no? I do. I think that we should be encouraging uh, all people to 
judge each other accordingly. Just get to know people on besides what they have, you know, how much melanin they have in their skin. You know, that that's a very, to me, it's a very superficial way to look at people. We, uh, you know, my skin color, it doesn't think, it does not form opinions, it does not have a conscience. All of that belongs within me and you have to get to know me you know, to know what I'm really about. And I think we should be encouraging young people to get to know people deeper than just how much melanin they have in their skin. Keisha, can you define woke for our soulmates and, and tell us why you think Governor DeSantis' anti-woke agenda is good for black America? So woke is basically a colloquial term that says that you are politically and socially awake. You know what's going on. Um, but most of the times, what I've seen, what we define as woke, these people don't really know what's going on. They hear narratives and they run with those narratives. Many times they're aligned with one side of the political aisle and people we're not digging deeper into what is actually really happening. I don't consider these people to be really woke at all. <laughs> Well, book bans, a lot of people uh, claim that book bans are one way in which they're pushing back against wokeness. Book bans in public schools have recurred throughout American history uh, with not notable flare-ups during the McCarthy era and the early 1980s. What distinction do you make between the book ban supported by the likes of Governor DeSantis and old-fashioned censorship? I am so grateful that you asked this question. When parents are talking about the books that we don't want our children to see, these nine times out of 10, they are pornographic explicit material. That's what we're talking about. Or they are explicitly promoting like the DEI, they're explicitly promoting segregation or, or telling inaccurate uh, historical, uh, they're not telling the accuracy of American history and, and particularly how it, it pertains to black American history. Because many times they only, when it comes to the CRT and how they push it in the schools and in some of these books, they only want to sell uh, young black children that, you know, you were slaves, there was some Jim Crow, you had some civil rights, and now here we are today. They never tell of the positive stories and the positive impacts that black Americans have had on American society. We're not telling those stories. The only story that these books seem to want to tell is an inaccurate one at that. And then they always seem to paint black Americans as some, you know, mm -hmm. that we have never really overcome. We've never really had victories. We've never really, uh, they, they never highlight the achievements that we have in, in America. But most of the time, these books are talking mm -hmm. about sexually explicit material that well, should not be before children. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I never really thought of Toni Morrison's beloved or the bluest eye as pornographic material. But uh, final question, There's as a black conservative, as, as a black conservative in Florida with young children, how far does Governor DeSantis and Florida Republicans have to go before they lose your support? Um, he would have to be actually doing the things that they are accusing him of. Um, but I am the type of person, you know, I, I go beyond the headlines. I look a bit deeper into what is actually being done. I actually take the time to read, um, you know, the, the summary of these bills and, you know, because that's what I do, because I want to know. And I know these things can be tough, but I would encourage people get away from the headlines, actually go and read the legislation that is being talked about instead of just listening to, you know, one side of the aisle and be actually diverse in your in, in your thought process. Well, our thanks, uh, Keisha King, for joining us here on Foxhole's Black Report. Uh, come on back and, and help us unpack uh, your point of view another time. Thank you so much. Florida's Icon Park is dismantling the Orlando Freefall Ride after a 14-year-old's tragic death last year. You may remember Tyree Sampson. Uh, his mother was on hand to witness the demolition and spoke of her heartbreak. Sampson's parents filed a wrongful death lawsuit. An undisclosed settlement was reached. The amusement park and the Orlando Slingshot operators support the decision to remove that ride. I think it was the right decision, Nicole Alive. I, I agree. I think it was the right decision to remove the ride. Mm -hmm. um, but what, you know, why did it come to, you know, having this young person sort of lose their life mm -hmm. in order for them to figure out that this ride wasn't safe? And mm -hmm. I think about how many other kids rode this ride um, and, were and, and, we're and really sort of dodged mm -hmm. a bullet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's a, a tragic um, 
uh, ending to the story, uh, but uh, it's good to know that, that there are young kids that uh, are going to be a little safer because, you know, this amusement park has decided to do the right thing. Zia Wade uh, discusses beauty and self-love lessons learned from her stepmom, Gabrielle Union, in a Dazed magazine cover story. Union emphasizes that beauty standards are arbitrary and self-expression is crucial. Zaya helps expand her family's understanding and appreciation of the LGBTQ community. Uh, Union and Dwayne Wade show unwavering support for Zaya's journey, including her Paris Fashion Week debut and name change. The young model uses her platform to inspire and support other LGBTQ youth in embracing their truths. You know, whether you, you know, agree with it or not, I know there's a lot of debate on if Zaya was too young, you know, for all of this, to, for the, her parents to allow this to take place or not. I came across someone I, I, I followed years and years ago, my DC days. He, at the time, was doing hair, uh, rose to fame, Tamar Braxton, I think he does Cardi B now, and, and has been very open about now her uh, process, her, her, her switching, her transgender process with the surgeries and everything. And let me tell you something, this thing is real because it's, it's Tokyo Styles, um, Touched by Tokyo is the, is the wig line, and now she goes by uh, Mia the Baddest. And this thing is real, and she's very open about, you know, the, the, the process, and she looks absolutely amazing. Of course, older, more mature. I think that's why you get the, the argument a little bit with how the Wades have handled um, their young, young daughter, still a lot of growing and maturing to do. But for me, watching that journey, this thing is a thing. It's for real. And just to watch, um, you know, the Mia, the Mia move in, in her mm -hmm. newness is just amazing to me. I could never get an appointment because even even when before she blew up, it was tough to, to get in there. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it's a thing. It, it's a it's it's the real deal. Yeah. Really and, 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 and trans folks like anybody else, they just want to be their authentic mm -hmm. selves. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're right. There are much younger people than what a lot of us may be used to, mm -hmm. you know, that are making this transition sooner. Um, that are being supported by their parents sooner. And there's also a lot more uh, science around uh, you know, transitioning uh, that uh, has also been helpful. And so I think Zia Wade is uh, really illuminating mm -hmm. um, uh, something mm -hmm. uh, new and fresh uh, that has uh, been a part of our, she's, she's illuminating something that's been a part of our community for a long time in a new and fresh yeah, way. And her photo shoots look amazing too. Yeah. All right, still ahead, she's been banned from the field. That's right. We'll tell you why track and field star Raven Saunders can't play for over a year. You're watching Fox Old Black Report. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Fox Souls Black Report. Well, Border Patrol agents are warning us to avoid travel to Mexico during spring break or vacation. Now that's because of continuing violence across the border following the deaths of two Americans during a kidnapping and the Shaquilla Robinson case. Most of Mexico is still on several do not travel lists. Yeah, I mean, I have friends that were just in Mexico City and I'm like, so what was that like? Mm -hmm. You know, were you scared? Uh, and they said that they felt, you know, very safe in Mexico City, you know, but in Mexico is a big country, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Cancun, Cabo, mm -hmm. you know, some of the hot spots for for spring break. Yeah. You know, uh, soulmates, you know, you know, tap tap your folks on the shoulder and say, yeah. you know, slow up and working back. You have the, the kidnapped uh, Americans, two of which were killed, the Shaquilla Robinson case. Mm -hmm. And even prior to that, I don't want to forget about the group of friends who went to Mexico for the Day of the Dead and were found dead in their Airbnb. Turns out there was a water uh, heater that was improperly installed, mm -hmm. and so they died of carbon monoxide poisoning. Their families are still looking uh, for justice uh, in that case. So there's been a, a, a few incidences in Mexico that I'm hoping our soulmates will continue to take heed and maybe schedule uh, some vacations elsewhere for now. Yeah, and it's really important that people go to the State Department website. Go to the State Department website to look up what's happening on the ground wherever you're traveling, whether it's spring break, or, or for whatever, uh, because they really do a lot of work to keep that up to date, to make sure that people have the information they need, you know, before, you know, you show up somewhere and you may, you know, get caught up in a situation. 
Ford Motor Company, their headquarters is just up the street here in Detroit, is recalling more than one million of its cars over a serious issue with its brake fluid hoses. The National Highway Tra uh, Traffic Safety Administration says Ford Fusions and Lincoln MKZs sold between 2013 and 18 are affected by the recall. The brake hoses on uh, the cars could rupture and leak. A brake fluid, which could increase the risk of a crash. All owners will be notified about the recall and dealerships will replace those hoses free of charge. I mean, those are two essential parts on any car, brakes yeah. and windshield wiper. Uh, I mean, especially with all of the inclement weather that's, that's mm -hmm. taking place uh, across mm -hmm. the country, particularly in places like Detroit. Yeah, where I also it snows. wanted to make mention that Honda is recalling uh, 500,000 right. of vehicles. It has to do with uh, the seat belts not latching properly. So the list here is the CRV, the Acura, uh, and uh, one of the RDX models of trucks anywhere between 2017 and 2020. So you might want to check that list as well for all our uh, soulmates driving Hondas. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's important stuff. Make sure you stay safe out there. Well, the Biden administration has urged TikTok to sell its stakes or risk a U.S. ban due to security concerns. Mm -hmm. The demands come from the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, uh, which TikTok confirmed. Uh, TikTok argues that a sale won't solve security problems and suggests transparent U.S.-based protections as a better solution. The company is proceeding with Project Texas to address some concerns by routing user traffic through Oracle's cloud servers. TikTok CEO Xiao Zi Chu will discuss data privacy uh, and security practices before the House Energy and Commerce Committee later this month. You know, TikTok has become very powerful mm -hmm. um, um, in, in messaging, in people's lifestyles. People are earning money via TikTok. And then, of, of course, there's a darker side to TikTok with some of these trends and challenges that that are, aren't aren't too safe or just aren't healthy. Um, I think, you know, it's it's gotten so big, it's, it's going to continue to be very hard to govern and regulate it. Um, and I think if you try to pull up on TikTok, I think you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna feel something for those users and people who are really depending on TikTok really to finance their lives at this point. Yeah. And especially when you think of black content creators mm -hmm. who have uh, made a lot of money and they've built a, a, a pretty sizable following, following in a very short period of time uh, on TikTok. And so I think about them. Uh, but I also think about uh, you know, just the tech industry in general. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been lots of talk about uh, really uh, regulating tech. Uh, you know, we haven't had any serious regulation of the tech industry in, in quite a long time. People talk about, you know, uh, laws like Section 230, among others. Um, and so I think, you know, we're going to see some level of, of regulation, whether it's individual tech, company, tech companies or uh, it's, it's the tech industry at large. But um, I also think about uh, the impact that that will have on folks and careers that have just boomed mm -hmm. and blossomed uh, because of the opportunities created by the industry. They better leave folks' accounts alone. All right, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency is suspending a black Olympic medalist from competing for 18 months. Now, the decision to suspend track and field competitor Raven Saunders came after she committed three whereabout failures. That's what they're called within 12 months. Now, whereabouts are select groups of elite athletes who are subjected to particular requirements requirements in order to be located for out of competition testing. Now, the first one was recorded in January of 22. She missed a second one in May and then another one in August. I mean, you know, if this ain't a uh, PSA to, to be on time, mm -hmm. I don't know what is. You know, for, for me, I was reading a little deeper into this and to, to break it down in, in layman's terms, uh, these uh, athletes are tested anytime, anywhere that the committee decides to test them, okay? And, and these are the dates that she missed. But it's supposed to um, maximize resource testing and then minimize the anxiety for the athletes. I don't see how testing anybody, having the right to test anybody anywhere, anytime, 
hence the whereabout. How does that minimize their anxiety? And you know, I mean, especially if you're in an area where you're less familiar with how to get uh, to a certain location, mm -hmm. or if there's conflicts in terms of their schedule. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe it, in her case, it just could have been. I mean, I know she knows what the what the rules are, but in this case, maybe it could have been. I'm just tired, and I don't want to feel feel like being bothered. You know, you know, you can't go straight to maybe she was hiding something or something was wrong. I mean, that's a lot to be taxed like that, to be, you know, on call like that yeah. for some testing. But I wonder how widespread it is among Olympic athletes, right? I mean, like, we forget, like, for a lot of them, this is their full-time job. Mm -hmm. You know, they train mm -hmm. and, and they're doing all the things. Um, and so is, is she an outlier, you know, or is this a more widespread issue? That's a good question. Well, coming up. It's a historic first for Fisk University. We'll, we'll tell you exactly what is being done at the school that uh, we have thousands visiting on the campus soon, that will have thousands visiting on that campus soon. It's a, it's a big deal. We'll be right back. You're watching Fox Souls Black Report. And we welcome you back to Fox Hills Black Report. The Fisk University women's gymnastic team is about to make history again by coming, becoming the first historically black university to host an NCAA gymnastics competition. That's right. The team already made history last year as the first HBCU to have an intercollegiate women's gymnastics team. Now the program, which launched last spring, is about to complete its first season. The team is headed by coach Corinne Tarver, the first black gymnast to win an NCAA all-around championship, excelling in all four gymnastic skills, floor exercise, balance beam, uneven bars, and ball and the quarter lie, corte. These young ladies, they just put something on it, some stink on this gymnastics. I, I mean, they are, jumping, they are jumping, they are jumping out of get it, the get it, get Get it rock with it. They are fantastic. I follow them across social media and they just amaze, continue to amaze. That's great. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. al it's almost like they're taking the art of J setting mm -hmm. and they're combining that with their gymnast moves and they are just in it. They're they, in the they zone. They're giving me majorette right here. Like, it, it's, it, I mean, you should really check them out across social media and support these young ladies, especially now that they're hosting this this event, uh, the, the first of its kind on the HBCU campus. And it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe maybe they'll come through here. Maybe mm -hmm. they'll come through Detroit. Maybe they'll, you know, give us a lesson and just sort of, you know, just the, the ABC one, two, threes, you know, of gymnastics. You know, I climb up on this desk. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit and watch. All right, let's let's stick with HBCUs for a moment as historically black schools uh, continue to have a harder time recruiting top athletes, which uh, makes name, image, and likeness deals for the recruits much harder to come by. Coach Deion Sanders, uh, now at Colorado, helped fuel the resurgence of HBCU popularity and attention when he was at Jackson State University in Mississippi, but is still not enough. That's according to the HBCU leadership uh, to help make a change to commissioners of the four major HBCU sports conferences recently agreed to work more closely together in partnering with professional sports leagues, including the NBA and the NFL, to increase the value of HBCUs and send more athletes to the pros. I love it. I love it. I think this is great. I think this is great. We need, you know, that pipeline to be mm -hmm. strengthened, you know, mm -hmm. sending more HBCU athletes to the pros. And I think Coach Primetime knows a little something about that. I, absolutely, he does. And, it, it, you know, a lot of people were concerned that after he left the HBCU scene, that that enthusiasm and that attention would wane. Um, and, you know, maybe, but maybe not. It looks like there's plenty of effort in making sure that it stays right where he brought it to. I mean, let's just give him that credit and you know folks are going to have to continue to rally around and not just current you know students and current faculty and 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 so on and so forth and, and alumni but but us those who may not have attended hbcus we could play a hand uh in supporting uh these efforts to make these mm -hmm. athletes more visible and to be able to land these deals uh that you know their counterparts at, at pwis land as well i mean these athletes we just saw the girls flipping mm -hmm. and dipping out the gym i mean they're just 
just as talented as, as anybody else on a PWI uh, yeah. squad. Yeah, but you know, it's also important to note that our HBCUs have existed for generations. Mm -hmm. And while I want to salute Coach Primetime for using uh, his celebrity and his notoriety to bring attention to Jackson State, uh, you know, let's keep in mind that, you know, our HBCUs have had a long list of luminaries who through their through their career accomplishments and through their notoriety have helped to sort of keep that brand uh, front and center uh, and in a good space. And so I just hope that more people are inspired uh, to continue to do the same that, that Deion Sanders has done, but also the likes of so many others. We can hope. Uh, well, financial resources continue to flow in for Howard University. We love this. The HU Athletics Department is set to receive $1 million from Nuna Baby Essentials, which will be used to renovate locker rooms and bird gym for the Mighty Bisons. Mm -hmm. Carrie Davis, director of Intercollegiate Athletics, told HBCU Game Day that Nuna Baby Essentials is an important partner of Howard Athletics. Nuna's core values, standards, and commitment to excellence align with those of Howard Athletics. Nuna Baby Essentials is a world-renowned brand that makes car seat strollers and baby gear. Nuna and HU joined forces in 2021. All right, you know what time it is. For Women's History Month, there's a special event this weekend honoring more than a dozen women making big contributions in our community. That's right. This celebrating, uh, we're celebrating the Sisters Award. Ceremony is taking place Saturday, March 18th at Quincy Hall in Minneapolis, and it's expected to be a great time. Nellie Stone Johnson memorialized in our very own state capitol. What in the world? <laughs> amazing. I love you. When it comes to amazing, Sharon Smith Akinsanya is right up there. She's a well-known marketing entrepreneur who helped create the Prince mural in Minneapolis. This is your resume, Shaquille? Yes, sir. And the organizing force behind the successful People of Color job fair. She's also shining a light on black women leaders in the annual Celebrating the Sisters event. 15 iconic black women, Tim, uh, coming up for their contributions that they've made to our region. Celebrating the Sisters is now in its 16th year and all the brainchild of Kevin Johnson. I felt like this would be a good opportunity to honor some black women in the community that was doing business on nonprofits and things that w they wasn't getting they do. And this year's honorees include a familiar face. And we have Fox 9's very own B.C. O'Neillieri, oh my goodness, who will be in the house that night, as well as Dr. Dorothy Bridges, who has given over 40 years of her life and treasure to making Minnesota a great place for all. The goal is not just to honor these women, but to show how diversity and equity can help grow Twin Cities businesses and organizations. Tim Welsh, you know, vice chairman, consumer banking at U.S. Bank, and the CEO of Children's Minnesota, Mark Gorlick, the CEO of Anderson Windows and Doors, Chris Galvin. These are white men, right, who could be anywhere in the world this Saturday night, but they know that it's important to show up and make sure that we are sending the proper message that you matter, amazing black women. Women. You matter to our reason, region. All iconic women forging their own path, like Nellie Stone Johnson. Things are getting better. Things are getting better. They're looking up. Oh my goodness, we love to see it, especially as we continue to celebrate the remarkableness of uh, women inside of Women's That's History right. Month. And big ups to all our soulmates watching uh, in, in uh, our in Minneapolis. in Minneapolis. That's Absolutely. Right. All right, up next, Tyra Banks is calling it quits. That's right. We'll tell you all about her newest ventures when we return. You're watching Fox Soul's Black Report. Welcome back to Fox Soul's Black Report. Well, time now for our celebrity and entertainment headlines. And on Fridays, we like to have a little fun with it, with the, mm -hmm. you know these these headlines here. So here to join us uh, with the conversation is the very funny G Thang. Now, is that your Come government name? Is is that what your mama no. gave you, Mr. G Thang? 
my mama didn't give me that. I'm running from a few people right okay. now. So, okay. Uh, it may make it make I, sense. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. De- so, I, I'm trying to uh, dissociate myself with G thing. I'm, I, but I can't. Yeah, my real name Gary. You know, my grown name is Gary. <laughs> well, right. I, I kind of like G thing. <laughs> Not hey, well, said. <laughs> And, and, and white people like G-Thang, too. White people like G-Thang. All right. All right. All right, Mr. G-Thang. Well, all good things come to an end. Believe it or not, Tyra Banks is leaving Dancing with the Stars. Say it ain't so. Tyra has been the host since 2020 and told TMZ that she is calling it quits to pursue her passion as an entrepreneur. She recently launched an ice cream brand, Smize and Dream Ice Cream, okay, and is focused on building the brand in America and abroad. So, g do you yeah, really buy yeah. that, that as the reason why she's leaving? I mean, you know, are, are you going to buy some of that ice cream from, from Tyra? I, I'm, 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 uh, I like Tyra. I respect Tyra. I respect the black woman. But to quit a good job is, is senseless. You know, what black person quit a job they getting a regular check on? Do you hear me? Now, you going that. We already got Ben and Jerry. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 they white, but they've been selling ice cream since we had black and white TVs. <laughs> <laughs> She's setting herself up to be an unsung. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, she, she almost 50 years old. Why are you trying to sell ice cream? You know what I'm saying to me? Go back to, girl, you better get back on that show. They're going to give that show to a young black woman. You understand me? Mm. And you're going to be saying, damn. I should have never quit. How do you know? You know, I don't know. Tyra continues to, you know, surprise and continues to, you know, reinvent herself. Mm-hmm. You know, that she's been off the yeah. runway for a long time now. She's very iconic. I know a lot of people tapped in and really enjoyed her as a talk show host. I would have hoped maybe she went back in in that arena, especially now that 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 all the sisters are on TV now with talk shows. They passing out well, talk they, shows, huh? Well, they got they got a lot of lot of people. That's 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 on talk shows now. That's relevant. I mean, people would only even watch Oprah. They wouldn't watch Oprah right now. You know, you got Sherry Shepard. Mm-hmm. You got Jennifer Hudson. Mm-hmm. You know, you got some people that still got some current event stuff that that people still want to see. Tyra Banks' namesake is good, but I mean, I but don't, you don't think I folks would tap that. in at this point? No, mm. not right now. Not well, right now. Her hair ain't even. Her hair ain't even as long as it used to be. <laughs> oh well, we ain't, <laughs> well according, we ain't, to this, according to this B roll we got know. on right now, I don't know. She got a lot of hair on. <laughs> well, that, she that, got that, enough for that, you that, and for me. <laughs> well, that's that. That is the Beyonce package. That is <laughs> the Beyonce package. Well, moving yeah. along, moving along. A couple in New York City is suing a Korean restaurant after the oh. pair says that they found a rat, a rat in their takeout. That's right. Yeah. Elise Lucero Lee and her husband, Jason Lee, posted on their Instagram account the details of what happened, saying that they ordered from a well-known restaurant called uh, mm. Gammy Oak in Koreatown and found the most disgusting thing in our mm. food. That's what they said. The couple says that they've been going to that restaurant for a decade and are otherwise mm. proud supporters of Asian cuisine. I can't watch it too long. I don't want to see that. I can't watch yeah. it too long either. Oh my God. Is it off? You gonna talk. It's still on. Oh, it's still oh on Lord screen. Jesus. Oh Lord, please take it off. Oh. Take it off. Man. Okay, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Let me let, let me just say this. I didn't know uh, I didn't know if that was a, a scary movie that they was watching or what. But I'm gonna tell you something. Hmm. Chinese people, no disrespect to the Koreans and all of that, they have been known oh, to use rats as chickens. Oh, I'm just Lord. saying that's the oh, that's Lord. the new chicken. I don't know well, about they that, say you think everything I don't tastes know like they say everything tastes like chicken. I don't they say know. everything I, uh, tastes like chicken. I just know that they normally cut it up. I don't normally see the eyes. You know what I mean? You normally don't see that. That is, if, I'm gonna tell you something. I would have, I would have told that restaurant. Oh, you didn't put it on again. I would have <laughs> told that restaurant. Yeah, I can't. Oh, you know what I mean? We don't like rats in our house. I mean, we, I mean, we don't treat them as pets. You know, sometimes white people treat them as pets. I wonder and how, we know how, how much of that they ate, though. G thing. How much of that? I, would, like I they, would hope they, they ate like, of it. Looks like they dug in a little bit before they realized what they were eating. Or, may, or maybe the other half person, ended up in somebody else's takeout. What'd you say, G? I think one person had one spoonful. Mm. And then that's when he uncovered the head. Ooh. You understand me? 
Yeah, I know it's gruesome. It is. You understand it me? Is. And it's and it's very disappointing. I think they're gonna win this lawsuit, and I I I hope they do because what I see is the song being the two of us. We look no more. <laughs> All right, we'll have well, to see what happens. And can we can we just say it's probably <laughs> safe to eat Asian food? You know, everywhere. This is probably the exception. All right, a new class action lawsuit uh, uh, filed in Illinois alleges that Buffalo Wild Wings has quote deceptive business practices over claims its boneless wings are actually just chicken nuggets. Oh my gosh, Amen Halim is the plaintiff and says he's suing for himself and potentially many others across the country affected by what the plaintiffs said are false and deceptive marketing and advertising of Buffalo Wild Wings boneless wings. Halim's says that in January of this year, he purchased boneless wings from a Buffalo Wild Wings and that based on the name and description of the menu item, he believed that it was actually wings that were deboned. I can see that. That's what you think boneless, yeah. you know, boneless wings are, deboned wings. Well, right? they deboned wings. They just doing it. The, the, uh, let me just say this: hmm. we're out of wings right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and be honest with you. So he wanted boneless wings, and they gave them what they had. I've been to I've been to that restaurant. I've been to the Wild Wings, and hmm. they don't have nothing with bones in it. Hmm. You understand me? So all of that wings, you can ask for the regular wings. Ain't no more regular wings. I go in there and watch sports all the time. It gonna look just like that. So he ordered what he ordered, but it, that's all they got. More Ain't no, I mean. So more, more like, more like, more a, like a chicken person. nuggets then, huh? Yeah, more then, chicken nuggets. They, I mean, you know, everybody don't like the food with that bone. Mm. Nope, well, a lot of people want it. I like the bone. I, I like the too. bone I too. Bone, I like yeah. the bone too, but I want to respect our, our boneless uh, wing eating uh, yeah. soulmates. But I'm, but I'm trusting if there's a bone, then then it's a natural wing that it really too much hasn't been, it hasn't been messed with too much. That's what mm -hmm. I'm trusting. That's why I, 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 I go for the bone, bone, bone in, bone in, I, bone in. I like bone in. I mm -hmm. like bone in. Mm -hmm. I like to know how to take it apart. <laughs> and that, that just, that just look like batter to me. You know what yeah. I mean? That just look like batter. Mm -hmm. I want, I want to be a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, All right. Let's move on here. Black China is reversing some of her cosmetic surgeries, including breast and butt reductions as a part of her life changing journey. She shared videos of her preparation for the procedures on Instagram and updated followers on her recovery. Take a look. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so I'm at the doctor's office right now. And as y'all know, I've been changing my life and changing my face. So one of the things that I feel like is going to take me to the next level is obviously taking some of, taking some of these shots out. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, China explained that at 19, she opted for silicone injections instead of a Brazilian butt lift, which she now warns against due to health risks. The surgery to remove the silicone took nearly nine hours. Mm. Now, China has really been focusing on lifestyle changes, recently ending her OnlyFans account for her children's sake and uh, settling her lawsuit with uh, Rob Kardashian, who, Kardashian, who's, of course, the father of uh, her daughter. But listen, if, if I would have made about $240 million on, on my OnlyFans account, I, I probably would have uh, eventually shut it, shut it down. What say you, G Thing? I mean, she's got plenty, uh, of, plenty, of, plenty of paper at this point. Yeah, she got a lot of money right now. Uh, and I commend her from taking it down, though. I do. Mm -hmm. I, I commend her from taking the fan, only fan page down and also taking all that stuff out of her body. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a natural kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I like women to have a natural body. I don't want breasts to just stare at you. You ever see? That's what the breasts do. They just they don't move. They look at you. <laughs> they like a door knocker. They just da -da 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 -da. they don't. I like. I like a breast with a nervous system. You hear me? As soon as I pinch it, she understands. You pinch one of them fake breasts, she don't know they pinch. I bit one of them nibbles off one time. She didn't know it was gone until Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> you think you too much. You too much. Oh my goodness. So I commend I commend Black China for getting rid of all that fake stuff, them lips, and go back to being she a cute girl. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. She don't need all that fake stuff. The booty don't match her legs. Come on, man. I would say I'm her so transformation happy. is 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 beautiful. Her coming into you know yeah. a, a new conscious of level of consciousness. I love it. Um, I think it's she's radiating and she's just beautiful. You know, I, I support. Look at just just like you. You're beautiful, natural. Look at you. You better let them use you. You better <laughs> let them use you. G thing. You hear that, Courtney? You better be, let him you, use you. You keep it. You'll be sitting in the middle as the third, third anchor hey, here if you don't hey, stop I, playing. Hey, I love a beautiful black woman. You hear me? All you right, understand. all right, all right, G thing. <laughs> Simmer down, G thing. <laughs> she married G thing. Well, uh, rapper I'm Blueface recently criticized uh, Krishan Rock on Instagram for the messy state of their laundry room, suggesting that she should handle it. Mm -hmm. In response, Rock claims she faces abuse and infidelity uh, from him, making mm. it difficult to manage household chores. Christians uh, also expressed that uh, her exhaustion on Instagram live and considered hiring someone else to handle the cleaning. Mm -hmm. Their relationship has hit more rocky patches with Rock's pregnancy, especially since Blueface has been questioning if he's the father and even brought, mm. it up, even brought up the idea of an abortion. Go at it, G-Thing. Your thoughts? Let me just say this about let me say this about blue face. Blue play blue face don't care. They the new Bobby and Whitney. Do you hear me? You know what? They the new Bobby and who? Bobby. Whitney. You know Whitney? what? Whitney. Bobby. Mm. Yes, a younger. They Real, a reality Bobby show Whitney. Bobby and Whitney. Reality yeah, show. Yeah, reality. Bobby. Reality oh, okay. show Bobby and Whitney. Uh -huh. Without the talent. Without the talent. Uh -huh. But I'm just gonna say this about blue face. Blue face don't care, man. He don't care. He out here pimping. You know what I mean? He out here, and she loves it too. You know, she one of them women that like if you don't if you don't give her aggression or a ch a choker, she she like to get choked. You know, I'm a choker too, but I don't choke to hurt. I okay, that's another story. But she loves this, and Blueface knows she loves this, and they they milking it. They milking this. They gonna get a reality show. You watch what I tell you. In about two weeks, Blueface is gonna be. They might be on Fox. They might have a reality show on Dial Network. Mm, you know what? It, it, Hashtag don't choke to hurt. I hope it is for just TV because if not, there's some real serious dysfunction mm. and some toxicity that that just is, is quite and, alarming. So I'm hoping this is all for show. I'm hoping, you and, know. And yeah. why have why show your dirty laundry room like that? You I know, mean, and it's a, it's feels, a small one, too. It yeah. ain't even a big one. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't even if I, if it ain't a big laundry room with the you know with the big wide ones. I mean, it's a small laundry. It's it's a it's a closet space. Mm. I wouldn't even show that. You supposed <laughs> to have a couple of dollars. You show more money than you got in your laundry room. Come on, man. G thing. G thing. We appreciate you. We'll definitely have you back on one of these uh, funny Fridays, uh, if you will. And uh, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Stay safe out there on the road. And and we appreciate you today, man. Take care, brother. Man, appreciate it. All right, soulmates, uh, there's more Fox Souls Black Report coming up, and it's our favorite part of the show. That's right, it's Black Excellence, and we'll introduce you to a black teacher who is being recognized for his hard work. You're watching Fox Souls Black Report. We'll be right back. Whew. Welcome back to Fox Soul's Black Report. NBA legend Kevin Johnson, I remember him, partners up with a black owned brewery to release beer honoring Ray Charles. Throughout March, the limited edition brew will be available at Kevin Johnson's Fixin' Soul Kitchen and People's Beer. That's right, Johnson teamed up with Oak Park Brewing Company and the Ray Charles Foundation to release the alcohol free brew as a part of the People's Beer icon line. It launched in 2021, honoring African American. Americans of the past, present, and future. And so when you see the beer cans that you saw there, there's artwork and all kinds of information about the icon's life and achievement. Past honorees include Sammy Davis Jr., James Baldwin, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Booker T. Washington, Bessie Coleman, Fannie Lou Hamer, one of my faves, and of course, Fred Hampton Jr. I think this is a great look. What a cool Amazing. idea. And it's alcohol free. So, you yeah. know. It, yeah, you know, you, you you get buzzed out on the information and the artwork <laughs> instead of the actual. You do, alcohol. you do, you All do, right. you do. Now, Colorado selects its teacher of the year, and guess what? It's a brother. 
right. Jimmy Lee Day II is a teacher at East Middle School in Aurora, Colorado, and was recently recognized as the state's first black male teacher of the Amazing. year. Amazing. Day has been an educator for more than a decade and says that from classroom management to how he rehearses uh, the students to his expectations, um, it all stays consistent and it doesn't change. It's unbending. And he also connects uh, by making himself human to students. That's his formula for success. Mm -hmm. Day is also the band director and instrumental music teacher where he rebuilt three band programs that went on to be award-winning bands. He's Brother, a, we salute you. We do. He's a TSU, Tennessee State uh, uh, University alumni, and He's from Detroit, Michigan. Oh, so we, my goodness. We double salute you, brother. <laughs> and, and you know what? Listen, I don't know why he moved to Colorado, but we definitely could have used him here in Detroit. But congrats to him. That is amazing I feat. Think that's, that's great. I mean, and we, and we don't see enough mm -hmm. black teachers, particularly black male teachers that's in the right. classroom. And so, you know, it's one thing to, to see him uh, in Colorado, in Aurora, Colorado, doing his thing. It's mm -hmm. another thing for him to be recognized as Teacher of the Year. Absolutely. And one of the great things about being recognized as Teacher of the Year is that you get other teachers' attention. That's right. So they're paying attention to, well, what are you doing in the classroom to engage your students? And so this is a really, really, really great thing. For today's stories and more, access Fox Souls video on demand on any of our streaming partners like Samsung Plus TV, YouTube, Roku. You can also check out past shows and other Fox content when you visit foxsoul.tv. And don't forget get to download Soulmates, download the Fox Soul app. It is absolutely free. Big ups to the weekend. I'm yeah. excited that it's here. Yeah. Plans? I'm, stay in put? I'm headed to Chicago to visit known. with my brothers. Oh, that's right. You got a little family gathering going uh, on. Uh-huh. Looking forward to seeing them and my, okay. my little nephew, LJ, who I don't get a chance to see okay. enough. I'm going to do a, a little St. Patrick's uh, partying tonight. My my, my great-grandmother's half Irish. Big ups to the Lynches in Boston. I mean, like Irish for real. Yeah. And then I'm going to visit with my couch for the remainder of the weekend. <laughs> You can put some, have a good put some more green safe. on. I'm Courtney <laughs> And I'm the Court Alive Corte. Until next time, have a great weekend and stay lifted. And safe. That's right.